Arsenal supporters, blows his whistle. George Moncur steps up and scores! What a point for them! The goalkeeper was very close and it's George. He lets in a low cross and a spin turn in. And the other back on level turns. Here comes to James, he shoots. Oh, what a goal from Tom James! That was a volley and that was a It's a low cross, it's an inviting cross and it's been turned in by Theo Archibald and he celebrates in front of the travelling faithful. Well, this is it, Orient Live, and with only 12 games to go for the rest of the season, all the games are starting to matter, and it's another massive one today here at Brisbane Road as the O's are facing Jody Morris's Swindon Town FC, and we are going to be bringing you every single second of the action right here on Orient Live. And we are absolutely delighted to be joined here pitch side this afternoon by journalist Brendan Pitcher, uh, ex Orient legend Jabo Abire, and of course the Orient chairman Nigel Travis. So thank you for joining us today, guys. Uh, and firstly, it must be good to be in E10 and look at the league table and enjoy a game here. Well, it, it is. I went to see the academy this morning. Uh, I'm pleased to say they won 3 uh, 2 at home to Cheltenham. Uh, but even though it's like 40 degrees warmer here, it seems colder here than in Boston, but uh, I'm going to get warmed up by a great game, a lot of Swindon fans, so I think it's going to be a terrific afternoon and hopefully three points. And a sold out Brisbane Road, of course, Jabbo, and a draw at Grimsby last week and hopefully it will be the maximum today. Hopefully so. Um, up against a, a good side, a, a side that's on form. But, you know, when the boys are cooking and everyone's at it, you know, this, uh, at Brisbane Road, it's a fortress. And it's an unchanged 11, of course, for Leighton Orient. The confidence won't have been rocked too much by not picking up maximum points against Grimsby. And they'll, they'll be keeping that continuity into today. Yeah, it was still a good performance against Grimsby. Look, we saw what they did in midweek. So clearly they're a good side. They probably better in their league position suggests. And we showed great character in that game to come back. So, yeah, I think deserves, deservedly unchanged today. Well, as we said, it is an unchanged starting eleven for the O's. But if you weren't with us last week, then let's remind you of what that is. So, of course, starting in goal for Leighton Orient is number 22, Lawrence Vigaru. We have got the unchanged back four of number two, Tom James. 19, Omar Beckles. 43, Ed Turns. And 24, Jaden Sweeney. And Omar Beckles, of course, wearing the armband there. We have our two in midfield, number 15, Edris El Mazzuni. And number eight, Craig Clay. We have our three in, betide, uh, in behind the striker in number 11, the Archibald, number 34, Kieran Sadlier, and two assists for him last week was number 10, Noel Sotiriu. And getting on the score sheet as well for the first time in a while last week is number 23, Charlie Kelman. He keeps his spot uh, and he will be hoping to get in and amongst the goals again this afternoon. And on the bench for the O's is Reese Byrne, Shadrach Oji, Adam Thompson, all another goal scorer from that game against Grimsby, George Moncur. We have Darren Prattley, Aaron Dryden replaces Harrison Soji and Paul Smith. So, there is just the one change to the squad with Aaron Drynan coming back from injury. And just, just looking back to last Saturday against Grimsby with Nigel, I'm guessing you were watching uh, with us here on Orient Live from Boston. And it, it was a spirited performance and one we could have actually not brought any points home from. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, by the way, you guys do a great job. And most uh, Saturday mornings as it is over there, I'm sitting here watching you doing your thing here. So it's, it's good being here. Yeah, it was a... Excellent game against, as you say, a very good team. Uh, I must say, I didn't expect them, and I think uh, along with their manager, that they'd go to win at uh, Southampton the way they did. But uh, they showed a lot of spirit. I think we really showed several things. One is when we go down, we fight back. I think Richie showed an awful lot of uh, clear decision-making. He took three people off, brought them on. But the quality of our squad, I think, really came through. So it was a overall a good point, and I was very happy with it. And of course, when, when you're top of the league, as we are, and, and with the running kind of really fast approaching, every game becomes massive and the points really start to matter. They obviously matter all season, but it, we're in such a fantastic position that it, it's just every minute's enjoyable. Well, every minute's enjoyable, but everyone keeps asking me, how many points do we need? <laughs> how many games do we have to win? And I think in many ways that's a dangerous situation because it can build in complacency. You can start thinking about next season. We've got to stay focused on the game in hand. So that's this week. Got a really tough game next week against Mansfield. Uh, I mean, someone said over there we need two wins. I think most people think we need three wins for promotion. But 
It's not going to be easy. We've got some very good teams to play. Colchester won't be easy two weeks' time. They've got a new manager, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when you actually look at the run-in, there's a lot of difficult games. Uh, I think it's going to be exciting all the way to the end. Obviously, we want to clinch promotion as early as possible. And I'm looking forward to my next visits at home to Stockport. Uh, and then I want to go to Bradford, where I think if they're still involved, there'll be 26,000 people there. So, you know, 12 games, they're going to be fun games, they're going to be interesting games, but let's stay very serious about getting the points one by one. You talk about not letting complacency creep in. I've, I've spoken to Richie in the week. I know he's been keen to do that. How have you been kind of making sure that no one kind of takes their foot off the gas at this point? Well, we do internal meetings and we talk about complacency a lot. Um, I try to keep everyone focused. I focus on cash to save because, you know, you, these are the opportunities to make as much money for the club as you can. I mean, every time we get a full house, that's more money into the club. We try and make sure that people stay after the game, get here earlier. Uh, there's all the other things that we do. And again, this setup is an integral part of what we do. I mean, we've probably got the best streaming setup in the league. Uh, and we want to build on that. We want to get more advertising for this. All these little things are part of taking the club forward. And I, I know you said you want to focus on this season, so we will. But not to get ahead of ourselves, but how big could it be for, for yourself and, and the board and the club overall to, to actually reach the, the goal that obviously is in well, everyone's minds? Huge. I mean, I remember the back end of 16 when we were starting to think about buying the club and I was watching the club sink into the, uh, the National League. Though We did have that remarkable game at Newport where we won 4 nothing, <laughs> uh, and Josh scored uh, three, didn't he? hat trick that day uh, funny enough I was up at Liverpool that day with a bunch of Dunkin Donuts people uh, but I think it's going to be huge because we'll be back where we started before the prior regime took over and caused chaos yeah. um, so very big indeed is the answer Ollie. Uh, we're excited about it we're planning for it even though I'm saying <laughs> don't get don't get complacent because you've always got a plan life's about planning and we should think we're really lucky to have a manager like Richie. Richie thinks about the game, but he's always thinking about two or three games down the road. I mean, he's got some unique skills, and there's going to be an article in The Athletic next week, which, by the way, if you don't read it, it's a really good paper. And I've talked about him, he's talked about himself, and it's to celebrate his one year with the club. But he's done an absolutely remarkable job. Uh, and he's got so many great skills that I don't think people really appreciate. His planning skills, his decision-making skills, as I mentioned. We're very lucky to have him. We certainly are. And we, we'll, we'll look away from the future of Leighton Orient for just a second because there's some quite big news this week about the future of football, potentially. And I know it's a, an issue that you're very keen on, on yeah. promoting and, and, and championing. Well, it's kind of ridiculous that the world's biggest sport in the world's biggest uh, country for that sport a lot of clubs are losing money. 75% of clubs lose money. Uh, we're one of them. We're going to lose over two million again this year. Uh, I wonder whose pockets that come out of. But anyway, um, but we can't carry on like this. We have to make football sustainable. And the fan-led review, which is uh, really based on the Tracy Crouch fan-led review, um, is 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 critical. The government have now bought out their white paper. That's a move forward. But I think the key thing that's very important for clubs like us is the discussions that are going on between the EFL and the Premier League. Uh, I heard that the Premier League have offered 19%. To make it clear to everyone watching, currently the EFL gets 16% of all the broadcast revenue. Uh, 19 is is a big move up. The e, uh, EFL have asked for 25%. Um, I'm sure in the end there's going to be some kind of compromise. I hope that there will be cost controls built in because football can't keep doing what it does. That when it gets money, it spends it. Uh, you know, I'm all for players getting more, more, more money, but it's got to be measured. 
and I also believe that the EFL contributes significantly to the development of players into the Premier League. Uh, I mean, it's an amazing number of players who are in the Premier League now who are in the EFL. So this is absolutely critical. Uh, we have to get away from having people just bailing out clubs all the time. And then at the same time, I think we need to get down and have some serious discussions about how we can get more people into stadiums safely. Can fans drink in front of the game? Which anything in America, you see fans drink sitting there with their beers. You can't do that here. There's a lot to be done and we can make this a better experience for the fans. We can continue to make it more fun watching it on TV and streaming. And that's the other thing, it's a new broadcast deal gonna come. And you probably read it in the papers this week that they're saying it will be double the previous deal. Uh, it's gonna be much more complicated, but that will bring money in. And my conservative view of all this is worth probably one million to one and a half million a year for Lake Norwich. Well, my next question was going to be, what does it mean for Rory? But I guess that answers it. So before we let you go and uh, get ready for kickoff, then, Nigel, we usually ask Jabbo or Brennan this one, but what way do you think it's going to be going today against Swindon? Well, I give the same answer as him. I don't like predicting. I'm superstitious. <laughs> but I, I, I think Swindon are a good team, though. I hear they, uh, you probably know better than me. They've got a couple of defenders missing. Uh, I mean, look at our bench. I mean, our bench is amazing. Uh, you know, George, I thought, played really well the last two games. Paul Smith, uh, perhaps we'll see him play more than 10 minutes today. <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be a great game, and I'm going to go out and say we'll win. Well, yeah. love that, Nigel, and thank you for joining yeah, us. That. Of thank course, and much. we are going to delve into the team news and the tactics and all the analysis very shortly. But first, let's hear the thoughts of the assistant coach, Paul Terry. Peter, you're into a new month now, but um, just firstly reflecting on, on February, I imagine you and uh, all the coaching staff are really, uh, really proud of the turnaround. Yeah, listen, we've been proud of the boys all season. Um, January was a difficult month, but we responded in the right way. Uh, got picked up results in February and we're ready to kick on again now. So you trip to Grimsby last weekend, a um, bit of a dramatic one. Um, what did you make of the game? Yeah, listen, it's a tough place. Grimsby's always hard to go to and I think that's shown in the week with, like, I know there was a way, but they're a tough team to play. They're going to beat Southampton in the FA Cup. So, do you know what? Going to Grimsby and getting a point is a good point. We're disappointed we don't win, but if you don't win the game, make sure you don't lose it. What are you making of the performances um, since uh, kind of the start of February? Obviously, we've had new players come in and they've kind of found their feet a bit more. So, what are you making of how the team performing? Yeah, listen, everyone's getting up to speed now. It took maybe a little while for players that was coming in to adapt to our style and how we play, but they've, they've caught up really well and it's a good group. You know, you come into this group of players and they help you and they want to learn and the players that we've brought in as well, they want to learn and, and hit the ground running as quick as they can and I think they've done that and they've all had a big impact. Defensively, obviously this season's been pretty spectacular so far, 20 clean sheets and I think it's just the 21 goals conceded so far. What, what can you put that down to? Again, it's not just the defenders, we've, we've done really well, but you've seen the way we play, you know, and we're on the front foot, we like to press from the front and it comes from there, you know, we're stopping a lot of teams getting chances against us, you know, but then when they do get chances, our back four have been good, Bex, Dan Hatt when he was fit, Ed's now come in, you know what I mean, um, along with TJ, Hunty, Sweens, you know, so we've defended the box really well and when you've got a goalkeeper like Lawrence behind you, it helps. Coming up to a year next week since you and the gaffer walked through the door, I bet you can't imagine how quickly that's gone by. No, it's gone really quick, you know, but it, it, I think it always goes quickly when you've had success as well. Um, and I think there's been a big change since we came in and the lads have responded to what the gaffer's asked and what he's wanted and they've stepped up to the plate. So fair play to them, you know. Um, he's asked a lot of questions of them, told them how he wants to implement his style and they've took it on board and, and really took it forward. <laughs> Top stuff there from Paul and uh, hopefully we'll be getting an equally as positive post-match interview from Richie Wellens after the game. So, of course, if you're watching live on our YouTube stream, then head over to the Orient website and pick up your match streaming pass to watch on this here on Orient Live. Or UK fans, you can pick up an audio pass to listen along with Dave, Victor and Matt Hiscock. But Nigel touched on it, but let's really get into the, the, the meat of the matter. Um, it's, it's an interesting one today. Swindon got a few injuries. Not in amazing form, but they've won their last two. It's, it's, a, it's a really tricky one to call today. 
Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Like you say, they've had the rumours before the game was they're going to be playing makeshift defenders, but it seems like they've got defenders out there. How fit they are is, is the question. But it's a stronger team than I was expecting. And with Jody Morris in charge, I think they've got a really, really strong, good manager for the level that's going to look out and try and play attacking football, which is going to be interesting. Well, I don't think many teams come to Brisbane Road and really try and attack us. So I'm interested to see how that approach works out. And it's interesting because defensively, Admittedly, last Saturday, two goals against Grimsby straight after half-time wasn't great defending. But the, the back four of Jaden Sweeney, uh, Ed Turns, Omar Beckles and Tom James, uh, they've, they've been immense of late. Yeah, they've, they've been immense of late and um, seeding two goals and the way we did, it's not usually our style, especially at home. So um, I'm sure we'll put that right today and we'll be on it. But they're going to have their chests pumped up. Um, Sean Hector and Murphy scored their first two goals for the club. You know, I was, I was with him at Cambridge, he's a lively play, he's sharp, and then obviously they've got Charlie Austin up, up front, so we've got to be on our metal today and be on it, and if we are, I can't see nothing more than a victory for us. And looking at the goals we scored last week as well, it was Charlie Kelman managing to get a goal, it had been a while and it was, it was a long time coming for him, but he got it and he starts again today. As a striker, when you get that one, does it, does it come a bit more naturally after that? Of course, of course, suddenly you can look like a totally different player. You know, sometimes when you, you, um, you haven't scored in a while, without realising, you just become a bit too safe and, and, and you, you're a bit frustrated. Suddenly the shackles are off once you score, you feel free. Suddenly you've got a bit of swagger about you. And, um, and to be fair, the manner he took his goals, always takes his goals well, even though he might, it might be a bit of a distance between each goal he scores, takes as if he's been scoring. So hopefully he bring that confidence and they're going on a nice run because I think he kind of deserves it. And Nigel touched on it, but you've got George Moncur and Paul Smith sat on the bench. George Moncur came on and, and changed a game and rescued a point last week. That is, it's incredible quality, but he's someone that, because of the performances from the starting eleven. They're, they're not managing to get back in and out of the team. Yeah, unbelievable options on the bench today. Like you say, like Nigel said, you, even like we haven't even mentioned people like Adam Thompson and Darren Prattley and Aaron Drynham back on the bench today. It's probably the strongest bench we've had for a while. But like you say, with that free and behind the striker, you'd probably be looking at how can you fit Smith and Monker in there. And you can't at the minute because they're all playing so well. Theo's been excellent. We're going to talk about Walter Terry in a minute, but he's really found his form. And also, Kieran and Sadler has slotted into that role where Paul Smith was playing so well. So he's got great options to have Richie if it does get to a stage where we're looking later in the game and we need to change things up. And the one that maybe no one would have called is Craig Clay keeping his spot for the last three or four or five games, keeping the captain out the side as well. Him and Idris in the middle, they've been winning that battle, they've been winning the tackles, they've been keeping the play ticking, it's just been incredible. Yeah, it's been incredible, you know, he's had, he's come in and out earlier on in the season, now he's really taken his opportunity, he's, he's made a good little connection with Idris. And, and fair play to the manager in keeping him because it could be easy for him to come back in and bring his captain back into the side and he hasn't and um, you know it shows um, the, the efforts and the performance of Clay has shown in, in the recent games. And Ruel Sotiriu was I think the, the key man on Saturday it's fair to say two assists for him on that day it's not what you really expect from Ruel most games but he was the provider and if we take a look at some of his performances this season we know that when he's when he's performing he can perform. Yeah 100% I mean he always seems to hit a patch and it hits the patch at the right time when you need him and when it's crucial. We did that last year and hopefully he's come into some good form in recent in the recent games. His last three games he's got two assists and a goal. So he's, he's hitting that patch when we need the results and the points are really important. And, you know, hopefully he produces that again today. But it's nice to see him homegrown doing the business. And he's playing in that 10 role where he, he's not getting as many chances. I mean, he obviously got this one against uh, Rochdale the other week, but he's not... It, as, as we saw on Saturday against Grimsby, it's a different role to what we've seen in, in maybe even last season when he went on that game of scoring 10 goals in a row. It's different to, to, to what we're seeing here. Slightly different, yeah, but I think what we've seen from Raul Soteria in the past is that when a manager really believes in him and gives him a run of games and trusts him, he can perform. It does take him a little while to get going. That's why he's been a little bit stop and start this season. But now Richie's given him a run of games and we're seeing the best of Raul Soteria. Like you mentioned, at the end of last season, when Matt Harold came in as caretaker manager, I think he really put his arm around him, said, you're going to be the man that's going to turn this around. And he provided. And now again, look, he's being trusted. The big name's on the bench and Raul Soteria's keeping his place and deservedly so. So. The game will probably be a bit more interesting in a defensive viewpoint though today because as you've already said, Swindon will probably be bringing this game to us. We've still got, yes, the, the, the back four have grown in experience in the last few games, but the likes of Ed Turns and Jaden Treaty, they're still youngsters and it'll be a big test for them. Yeah, big test. Swindon have got a number of really good 
attacking, experienced players. People like Johnny Williams, who has played in the European Championship for Wales, and Charlie Austin, who's got untold amount of goals in the Premier League and the, the Championship. So it's going to be a test for them, but so far, everything that Ed Turns and Jane Sweeney have been doing in the last five, six games has been excellent. I thought Jane Sweeney against Grimsby was superb, and, and they're just so consistent, which is kind of a real credit to them given their age and, uh, and their inexperience. And as we're approaching this running then, Jabba, how does it feel as a player when Friday night you look at the table and you're that many points clear and the goal is so apparent and everyone's vying for the same thing? Coming into a sold-out game where the pressure maybe starts to creep up a little bit, how how, how do you cope with that and how, how, how do those emotions start to feel? I mean, you say pressure, but they've sort of been dealing with it throughout and, you know, it's just... It, it, Sometimes it just comes, it's another game. We know what we need to do. It's all. It's in, it's in everyone's body. We don't really need to talk about it. We know each game brings us closer to our goal. And half the time, you just if you start saying, right, we need to win, we need to win, we need to win, it suddenly goes the opposite. So generally, it's an unspoken thing. We know we need to win. We'll go out there, we'll do the business, chalk off this, this game, onto the next one, each game as it comes. But you know... In a, in a, in, in as, as the games press on, you know you're going to be close to that and you're buzzing inside, but you just need to take each game as it comes and be calm. Well, we are taking each game as it comes and this afternoon's game is against Swindon Town FC and I'm sure Richie will be hoping to get one over his former club this afternoon. But before we go any further, let's take a look and see how the visit inside will be lining up this afternoon. In goal for Swindon is number one, Sol Brin. Number two, Romeo Hutton. Number four, Tom Clayton. Number five, George McEachran. Number seven, Joe Tomlinson. Number eight, Johnny Williams. Wearing the armband is number 11, Charlie Austin. Number 18, Rhys Devine. Number 19, Rishiane Hepburn Murphy. Number 21, Dylan Kaji. And number 31, Harrison Minter. And on the bench for the Robins is Jack Copland, Tommy Adeloy, Ronan Darcy, Luke Jeffcott, Ricky Aguar, Jacob Wakeling, and Tyrese Shade. So they're, they're sitting 10th in the table, Brendan. Uh, as we say, you know, Jody Morris has only recently come in and it's been a bit of a mixed bag of results. So it's, 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 inter or it's difficult to even predict which way or which side will turn up this afternoon. Yeah, look, on their day, that, that team is a very, very good experienced League 2 team with a number of standout players. I mean, Jody Morris, like we've said, they've got a coach who is so experienced and has, has coached at higher levels. He, he's done a good job so far, I think. I think they've had a lot of injury troubles. They've still got injury troubles. But he seems to have focused on kind of the attacking side first. And that's why today I think they'll, they'll probably come and have a go because it's a bit of a free hit. They, they, they've got defensive troubles in terms of personnel. Why not go out and, and, and play to their strengths, which is attacking? And we talk about pressure in from Orient's perspective, but for Swindon Town, they're playing in front of a sold-out away end who are already making some noise. They're playing top of the league. They, there's not any real pressure on them to come here and, and pick up a result. There's not much expectation. Do you think they might play into their hands a little bit almost? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the pressure's off for them in a sense. They've got the crowd. They're out here for um, a nice afternoon out. Can our team do something this afternoon that they've come off the back of two victories? We're playing top of the league. Let's just have a go. And only they're going to try and play more in, in our half because that's where their strengths are and they're weak at the back at the moment with like indifferent defenders. So they've got nothing to lose and I think the fans will cheer them along and know that and it could galvanise them. Uh, if, you, if we're thinking that they could be weak at the back, then where do you think those weaknesses are that, that this Orient should, should try and look to exploit? Well, it sounds like they have got a, a back four of, of relatively kind of experienced defenders, but it's whether how fit they are and, and, and how match fit they are. So I think you've just got to be like looking at terms of can we test their sharpness? Can we get in behind early? Can we do lots of movement and kind of put them really under pressure? Because look, there's one thing kind of being out there and, 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 and patched up, but if you've got players like that um, free in behind Charlie Gelman, kind of all interchanging and, and, and making it difficult for them, it's going to be a tough day. And from the Swindon attacking point of view, then you can't look past Charlie Austin. He's he's a, a good striker for this level. I think that's an understatement. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what he's doing at this level, to be honest. I think he still could probably get a, a League One move at least. And he's come back from Australia and, and seems to have gone to his, his kind of uh, his former club and gone back and really galvanised them. He's got a great record, as we're seeing here, scoring goals, creating, but also, as we've seen, he's wearing the captain's armband. He's playing that kind of 
leadership role, which he does so well. I think he did a similar thing with, with QPR maybe about um, two or three years ago where he came back to an old club, galvanised them, and, and not just on the pitch in terms of what he brings with his goals, his hold-up play, but also in terms of the mentality he brings. And I think he, he's probably, obviously, the one that Orrick are going to have to look out for today. Well, from Brisbane Raw to Brisbane Road, hopefully he won't have as much joy uh, in his time here in E10. But... <laughs> It's, it's big for Omar Beckles and Ed Turns to, to try and do this, but you, you expect Omar Beckles to be able to pocket him? I hope so. Omar Beckles has pocketed a fair few number of League Two strikers this year. But what we see sometimes is maybe Charlie Austin, being the cute player he is, might be hang off of, of, of Ed Turns and go, I don't fancy a bit of Omar Beckles, but I'll, I'll have a go at the 21 year old Loney. And I doubt Ed Turns will have played many more experienced players than Charlie Austin. So it's a good battle for him today and one that I'm sure he'll do well in. How excited are you though, Jabbo? The crowd is filling up, it's another sellout here. The away fans are making some noise and Nigel says we're not going to look towards next year yet, we're not going to get complacent, but when the points are up for grabs and, and that table is there to kind of be cemented, it's, it's really exciting. I mean, this is what it's about. I mean, you, you, this is the business end of the season, you sell out crowds, you're out there, everyone's cheering, you want to get that result, you want to be out there and get those wins. So these are the games you want to play and they're going to be up for it. And hopefully we will play a result and we're a step closer to our goal. And we know some of the characters in this squad, they like putting on a show for the home crowd. You expect they'll do the same again today? 100%. You kind of play up to it as well. You know, you love it. You, you walk with your shoulders up. You stand in that tunnel knowing we're the boys to be. They've got the confidence. They just make, need to make sure that every, every man is on it today. We're ratting and we're, we're, we're hyping each other up and we'll, and we'll hopefully get the victory without no doubt. Well, kickoff is just moments away and the atmosphere is building here in E10. And that's all from us for now. But it is time to hand over to our very capable hands, the match commentary team of Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. Good afternoon and welcome to Brisbane Road. And Matt Hiscock, I've not heard it as loud as this for a very, very long time. Yeah, no doubt, cracking atmosphere already building around the stadium. Decent following as well, has to be said, from Swindon. I know they said they'd sold out their allocation. It's certainly filling up, but really good noise from the Orient ends and uh, listening to Paul Terry in, in the build-up to this game, he said how important it was the crowd and the 12th man factor they bring the team. And a sense of real anticipation, and why not? On Thursday, it'll be a year since Richie Wellens took charge, and three years ago, of course, he led Swindon to the League Two title, and that's the goal this season. Yeah, very complimentary, wasn't he, about his time at Swindon? He made it quite clear that he still has a, a strong affinity with the club, but Orient is where he's at now. That's the task to obviously replicate what he did at Swindon, and that is, of course, achieve promotion. Here are the two sides, Lake Norrington all red, of course. It's a chain strip for the Robins of white shirts with black shorts and black socks. Lake Norrington unchanged, and there are four changes for Swindon because they've got injury and suspension problems, particularly at the back. Yeah, absolutely. It looks a little bit makeshift, doesn't it? I was looking at the number of appearances by the Swindon 1 to 11. I think there's only two in there that have played more than 40 games in the Football League. There was some real inexperience and I just wonder whether Richie Wellens will be talking to the Orient players to try and get them and exploit that early on. Jody Morris took charge of Swindon. He left it late. It was the eve of the uh, closure of the January 20th for window. And it was interesting. I was uh, doing my preparation. It would seem that Swindon's supporters wanted the club to sign defenders. And, of course, they signed a, a 